Every profession, every trade, and every academic field has its own special language. If you've ever watched a medical TV show, you will hear the doctors and nurses speaking medical language. High dose of epi, atropine, four units, oh, nag, he's exsanguinated into the left chest. Watch a training video for installing an air conditioner. You'll hear their technical words and language, too. We have two more wires, the L1 and L2, coming up into the control cabinet here. Professors in physics and other academic areas also have their own language specific to their field. In each case, these experts use specialized language to help them communicate. This is another way of writing the matrix K acting on the column vector A. Business has its own language too. One of the most important business languages is in the field of accounting. Before we learn about that language, let's learn more about accounting in the real world. It might seem technical, but basically, accounting is keeping track of businesses' finances. People have practiced accounting for thousands of years, tracing back to ancient civilizations. Accounting allows business people to record, interpret, and communicate information about a company's financial activities. During medieval times, trade and commerce grew rapidly and businesses' finances became more complicated. To keep pace, people had to improve their accounting methods. During the 15th century, the Franciscan monk and mathematician Luca Pacioli described a new method in his book Summa D'Arithmetica. Today, we call this method double-entry bookkeeping. This innovation became widely used by merchants during the period of the Italian Renaissance. One reason it caught on is that it allowed business people to see every aspect of their business finances at a glance. Here's how it works. Suppose you spend $1,500 for a new computer for your office. In double-entry bookkeeping, the transaction has two parts. You spend an asset, cash, to buy another asset, computer equipment. The two parts of the transaction require you to adjust two accounts in your company's books, the cash account and the equipment account. Here's what the double entry looks like. Because they work so well, the principles of accounting have not changed very much over the centuries. The first established accounting practices employ the concepts of assets, liabilities, income and expenses, and the need to reconcile or balance these accounts. These same concepts still form the basis for all accounting functions used by businesses today. However, the methods for compiling and processing transactions have changed dramatically over time. The Sumerians used cuneiform writing on clay tablets to record business transactions. Some of the oldest Egyptian hieroglyphic writing more than 5,000 years ago was used for accounting. In the Incan Empire of South America, people used knots tied in cotton and wool cords known as kaipus to record the amount of agricultural products. Across the world and through the centuries, people have used many types of tools and processes to account for their business transactions. With the development of computers, important, repetitive bookkeeping functions are performed by software, with information provided by data entry clerks. The capability and efficiency of computers enable software to generate accurate financial reports at the touch of a button. These reports provide owners and managers with vital financial data to make informed decisions on the business's daily activities. Accounting is a specialized language that allows you to communicate and understand the operations of all different types of companies and organizations. Whether it's a logging company, a manufacturer, a nonprofit, a store or hospital, Companies and organizations require very similar financial information. This information can be broken down into three main categories. Operating information, financial accounting information, and managerial accounting information. There are many factors that go into the success of a business, including marketing, customer service, and sales. However, the foundation of all aspects of business operations is basic accounting. Talented and skilled people, the world over, 
create all kinds of products, provide unique services, are great marketers, and excellent salespeople. These people are essential to business success. However, without a basic understanding of financial management, any business will not effectively use the money earned. Businesses need people with the skills to collect money, track it, save and spend it wisely and efficiently. In fact, many businesses fail because of poor financial management. Yet, these companies could avoid going out of business if they applied proven financial and accounting principles. The success of a business depends on understanding basic financial principles and using them every day to operate the business. Even the smallest businesses need accounting. Let's look at a small one-man operation. Anthony is a student who began his Hope Notes music business last summer to help him pay for college. He's a musician, and his business earns income in several ways. He plays live shows, sells original recordings online and on CDs, and gives private lessons to people who want to learn how to play the guitar. His different services and products give him several sources of income. Anthony's business also has expenses. Expenses are payments for the things he needs to operate the business. Any business has expenses. For example, Anthony has to pay for his website, online marketing, the people he hires to help at his shows, printing of CD covers, travel expenses, and he needs to support himself. At first, Anthony did not keep accurate records. When his students paid him, he'd put the cash and checks in his pockets. Sometimes he'd forget to take the money out, and they'd end up lost or in the wash. Anthony's friend Sean helps to sell his CDs at places he performs, but the amount of money from the sales often didn't match up with the number of CDs sold. Where did the money go? Instead of paying attention to the money and financial aspects of the business, Anthony was totally focused on the music products and services he was selling. One day in April, his dad texted Anthony a question. Did you file your income taxes yet? Though his dad told him to keep track of the money he earned and paid out, Anthony never really used an efficient system of keeping track of the money. The first few questions on the tax form would have been easy to answer if Anthony had kept accurate records. His records would have told him his income, how much he spent, his expenses, and if he made any profit. In other words, did he make money or lose money? He had no idea. How would things be different if Anthony had kept records of his financial transactions from the very first day? Let's find out. So let's go back to when Anthony first started his business. One of the first steps he should have taken is to choose an accounting system. The system would have given him the tools and processes to stay organized. There are lots of accounting systems. Anthony chooses an online accounting program where he is able to keep track of his sales his expenses, and to store other important financial information. Daily, Anthony sets aside time to collect financial information and input it into his accounting system. Each day, he goes to the accounting system website to download a report that shows him how many songs he sold online and how much money he made. When he collects checks or cash from his guitar students or a gig, he inputs the income into his accounting software and deposits the checks and cash into his bank account. He also keeps track of his expenses by organizing his receipts and bills. In the first month, Anthony bought ink and special paper to print business cards and posters. Anthony hired a photographer to take promotional photos, too. Anthony also pays for blank CDs and jewel cases. He keeps his receipts when he buys gas, too. Traveling to and from his students' homes and his gigs is a business expense. At the end of his first month of operation, Anthony prints a financial report known as a profit and loss statement. During the month, he taught 24 guitar lessons and earned $600. He played 5 gigs and earned $500. He sold 20 CDs and 14 music downloads for a total of $260. Anthony's total income for the month is $1,360. Anthony spent $29 for CDs, $20 for business cards. Anthony paid $30 for online advertising, $35 for his phone service. The photographer charged him $100. He also spent $160 for gasoline and paid his friend Sean 
$250 for helping him set up and run sound for his gigs. Anthony earned a total of $1,360 in income and paid out $624 in expenses. He made $736 profit in his first month of operation. The basic financial information Anthony is compiling and recording is operating information, one of the three main categories of accounting. By simply keeping track of how much money comes in and how much money goes out, Anthony is able to understand and analyze his finances and therefore make better decisions for his business. Operating information involves compiling the most detail in accounting information, but it also provides the foundation for financial and managerial accounting. An owner or a manager of a business needs to make countless decisions every day that directly impact the business. The most important financial tools used by a business to make decisions are managerial accounting reports. Managerial reports collect data from accounting transactions and present the information in various ways to facilitate decision making. One of the most common uses for managerial accounting is in preparing a budget. A budget, among other things, helps the business to forecast income and expenses. Even the smallest businesses like Anthony's Hope Notes company can use managerial accounting to prepare a budget and plan for the future. After six months, Anthony's business is going well. His profit and loss statements show that he's earning a small profit each month. A profit and loss statement, also called a statement of earnings or income statement, is a report that shows the amount of money earned by business activities and expenses, the amounts paid in the course of a business operation. A profit and loss statement summarizes financial activity over a period of time, typically a month, quarter, or a year. It shows the revenue, the amount of money an organization has taken in, and expenses, how much money it has spent during the specific time period. Anthony has a contract to perform at 10 summer festivals over the next several months. He will get paid a total of $5,000 for the show. However, one of the conditions of the contract is that Anthony has to provide his own sound system for the venue. Anthony does not own a sound system and would have to purchase one. Anthony priced out a sound system to cost about $3,500. Anthony doesn't think his business has the cash in its savings or checking account to cover the cost of the mixer and sound system. But, given the potential profit, he thinks it's a good business decision to purchase the equipment. So Anthony decides to apply for a loan at the bank. Bankers, in order to approve a business loan, want to know if Anthony has the ability to pay back the money lent. In order to make that determination, the loan officer needs Anthony's financial accounting information. So, as part of the loan application process, Anthony has to provide the loan officer with a financial statement including the profit and loss statement. But how does Anthony know how much cash he has on hand? For this information, he needs a balance sheet. A balance sheet is a status report. It shows information about the company's assets. Assets include how much cash they have, accounts receivable, inventory, and equipment. A balance sheet includes the company's liabilities. Liabilities are how much the company owes to the other people and organizations for past transactions. The balance sheet also shows owner's equity or the value of the business. When a business applies for a loan, the loan officer also wants to see the business's financial health in terms of how much money is going in and out of the business over time. For this, Anthony will need to provide a cash flow statement. A statement of cash flow details the movement of cash through a company over a specific period of time. Anthony's financial statements provide summaries of his company's operating information. The banker uses that information to determine the financial position of Anthony's company. Accounting uses specific terms and follows a certain set of rules. The set of rules, standards, and practices used in the accounting industry is called GAAP, or Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. GAAP are used to prepare and standardize financial data such as profit and loss statements and balance sheets. Banks and investors expect companies to follow GAAP when they report their financial information. After applying for a loan and submitting the necessary financial statements to the bank's loan officer, Anthony is approved for a loan of $3,000. 
he needs to spend the extra 500 from his savings account to purchase the sound system. But Anthony knows from his financial reports that he can afford it, and it will be a good investment. Anthony realizes the purpose and importance of accounting. Its data and methods provide vital information to help him make decisions about his business. Having a good accounting system helped him provide information to a bank in order to secure a loan so he could grow his business. By learning accounting, Anthony is now able to communicate financial information about his company so he can successfully grow his business. Clear, accurate financial data enables business owners and managers to read, prepare, and compare an organization's finances, enabling informed business decisions. Hence, accounting is the basis of any successful business. Mm-hmm.